Hey everybody, Chad with Patriot Astro, and I just wanted to do a short video today as an update to my Nina Polar Alignment plug-in video. There's been a number of advances that I think deserve an update. So first, if you didn't see the original video, there's a new plugin architecture available in Nina 1.11. One of the first plugins made available to us so far is the ability to do polar alignment directly within Nina. The plugin is called 3-Point Polar Alignment or 3PPA. One great aspect of this, other than being available directly within Nina, is that you do not need to be able to see Polaris for this to work. You can point anywhere in the sky and get a very good polar alignment. The plugin uses your configured plate solver to complete this task. Initially, when I created the first video, you needed to point near Polaris or along the meridian line. That is no longer the case. You can point anywhere in the night sky and be successful. That was the first improvement since the plugin was initially created. The second big point I want to call out is actually an improvement to Nina's plugin architecture itself. Plugin authors can now have their plugin installed as a tab within the imaging panel. This means you no longer have to use the advanced sequencer to complete a polar alignment. I'll show you how this works in a minute. The last point I want to show you in this video is that I completed a polar alignment using my long focal length 8-inch SCT at about 1320 millimeters. While it can be a little bit more challenging because the long focal length causes larger apparent movements of the stars as you adjust the alt and as knobs, it is possible. Many other polar alignment mechanisms available today typically want to restrict you to shorter focal lengths in the 200 to 400 millimeter range. This is not the case with Nina. Also, because you're using Nina's configured plate solver, the entire sky is available. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right in and take a look at the enhancements. Okay, so here we are in Nina 111. You can see I'm running nightly 115. And if I look at my plugins, I can look at the available plugins. There's a number of them. I have a couple installed. I can check for updates if necessary. And then I can look at my installed plugins. I have three here, one of which is the three point polar alignment. And you can see I'm at version 1.2. Make sure you're updating your plugins. Um, the newer plugin for three point polar alignment is where you gain the ability to use the entire sky as well as the ability to run it in an imaging tab rather than the advanced sequencer. So you can see I have all of my equipment connected as needed. So right now we can just go to the imaging tab. And when this opens up, you'll see that I actually now have a tab called three point polar alignment. If you don't have that tab in the upper right hand corner, there is an icon you can click on to enable that tab. So right from here, I can configure my three point polar alignment. Now I have very limited skies. So I'm gonna go ahead and move down um, the measure point distance to 15 degrees. I'm gonna set an altitude a little bit higher um, and I'm gonna change my azimuth to point initially back towards the south, um, actually the southeast so that it wraps across the sky and ends up sort of uh, across the meridian. I'm gonna make sure I'm on my luminance filter. I'm gonna leave it at two seconds and I'll go ahead and click start. So initially, just like before, and if you need to, you can go back and watch my original video. I'm gonna speed through this pretty quickly here. It's gonna to slew to the first target and it's going to plate solve. Then it'll move to a second point, plate solve, and then finally a third point in plate solve to get a good understanding of where you are in the sky from a pointing perspective. And then from here, I'm gonna speed this up dramatically, but this is all about it going back and forth with two second images while I adjust both my altitude and azimuth knobs based on the errors I'm seeing on the screen. So I'm going to go through that here uh, back and forth. One other thing I should note is that uh, if you're using the box on the screen as a visual, you can click on any of the on-screen stars and it will begin to track that star instead of the selected star and the box will be oriented from that point. Uh, but again, I'm just going back and forth with my alt and as knobs until I can get these numbers low enough. So I'm trying to get this as low as possible, hopefully under um, one arc minute into the arc seconds. You can see here I got down to 34 arc seconds of error uh, in total. So that's actually more than acceptable and I'm pretty happy with that. I should note that this entire process took me 10 minutes from start to finish and actually some of that is just not being as familiar with my AZGTI mount and uh, some of the controls there are really kind of touchy. Um, it's not the best machining work. Uh, on that particular equipment and mount I'm using. So, uh, you know, it took a little bit longer for me to get it where I wanted to. 
So right now I'm going to jump in and show you very, very quickly what it looked like in the previous version. And in this particular demo, I was using my C8 um, Celestron telescope and I was actually trying to run this at a focal length with a reducer of about 1320 millimeters. That's really quite a long focal length to try to accomplish uh, polar alignment with a tool like this. Um, it is a little bit touchy. It gets a little bit challenging at times because even the smallest movement on your Altaz knobs it is going to move the stars quite a bit, right? So it takes a little bit of practice, but it is something you can do. Um, it is something that that is possible. And again, that's important to me on my C8 because in that particular case, I don't have a separate guide scope. I'm using an off-axis guider, which is running at the same focal length as my telescope. So I don't have an alternate option, a shorter focal length scope that I can use for alignment. So I just need to be able to accomplish it using this tool at that focal length, which I did. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. And as always, please like and subscribe, as well as share this video with anyone else you think can benefit from it. Let me know if you have any other questions or suggestions, and as always, clear skies.